this, ladies and gentlemen, is London. Swinging London, it's been called, though some people might find a different adjective. Social rebels have taken over in what seems more like an invasion than a revolution, because they've got their own new language that is way out and weird, to say the least. What are the redeeming features about the kids who have cocked a snook at almost everything a lot of folk hold dear? Remember, youth has always had a fight to assert its independence, and it's always had its successes. But Teddy Boys seems traditional compared to this. Is there any hope? There must be. That girl certainly learned to dig advanced mathematics, and she's not unique because here's an up-to-the-minute girl in a sober publishing firm who has started editing a youngster's magazine. You see this when you open the door. The decor's different. Here, youth talks direct to youth in its own lingo. And under the trimmings, there's discipline. Perhaps it's only the slang and the fashion that's really changed. Youngsters on the staff of Intro Magazine are aware that in the fashion world too, youth talks to youth. Designer Mary Quant is just one of the breakaway generation who has now dreamed up a revolutionary approach to young cosmetics, which even department stores like Selfridges have taken up. Remember that this is big export business too, like the Beatles and the freaky fashions this young generation created to some horror. And whoever faced the predicament of a girl with a paper dress who wants to sunbathe in the park? Because even young people aren't used to these new poster dresses, which in fact can be worn again and again, and though they're made of paper, can even be washed. No, people aren't used to paper dresses, but even the young ones are sometimes meticulous about litter. And that's another point in their favor but it doesn't always help. We're watching these wayward kids critically, but detached, and, well, you've got to face it, they're not as feckless as their elders would like to think. Bob Dylan's one of their current pop stars, and paper dresses, after all, are expendable. You can wear a dream for a week. Remember, older generations had Oxford bags, bobbed hair, plus fours, new looks. Intro magazine, the kids' own do-it-yourself answer to the squares in their midst, simply ferrets out what's happening and reports on the new youth scene, not only in London, but throughout the country. The new scene, which seems so baffling, is countrywide. And you can see it at Manchester's rallying point, the phonograph. Like it or not, they're making their way, because here, at this Manchester club, you've got a keen working girl reporter and a brisk disc jockey, Simon D, who's made his way even into the middle-aged hearts of the housewife's choice audience. In Newcastle, too, there's something fresh for intros whiz kids to report. Baffling, what we see, but it's not as sinister as some of our greybeards think, because this is a different generation making mistakes while desperately trying to find an identity. There's a boy, Paul Whitehead, who certainly tried, whether or not you think the result is an eyesore, to make his mass-produced motor car look individual. Not a bad aim, and a lot of work. Meticulous work just as it is here at the archaeological site where the experts believe King Arthur had his knightly capital, Camelot. The kids are here too, with Union Jack clothes contradicting their mutiny, making them even more of a mystery to some of us. And here they are digging up history. The intro reporters cannot only interpret it, they can relate it to one of those way out inexplicable events that the young ones call a happening. See what sense anyone can make of this, unless they're members of the new young army of occupation. Intro's photographer and reporter are here, where Keith Albarn has laid them on a happening, a psychedelic dream, whatever that means, for good, old-fashioned cash. 
scenery that is surrealist plus just as a background, and colour such as you might see in a hallucination dream. For no particular reason, join in a happening to the beat of the 117 group. Just as there seemed to be some sense in it, they had to do that and bring us on past all these macabre trappings into London's Speakeasy Club. But at least even a kids' club has some of the familiar trappings that we adults can recognise, including here the intro group that has taken its name from the magazine. This speakeasy club reflects tradition, America's prohibition days, and what's acceptable as an ashtray makes a plant pot in the hectic offices as intro get their first issue ready for press. Well, what's to be made of this strange, disturbing generation as these youngsters send their magazine to press? and go off to relax at London's chic Scotch Club, where there's another top disc jockey, David Simons, to give them all a big hello. Is this generation against the community, mocking our heritage? I don't know, but I don't think so. They seem exuberant and normal enough, and certainly active enough. Perhaps some of us are just getting old and crusty and forgetting what it meant to be young and active in every sort of way. Like it or not, this gives us a valid picture of swinging youth at work and at play. 